Hey man, you want to do a raid? We need a well. Hey dude, do you want to do a GM? Can you bring your well? Hey man, you want to go just massacre like a family of four dregs in the Cosmodrome? We need a well of radiance. Well, how about you go fuck? What do you guys think? Those little two over the top of the intro? So, today, I would like to talk about an Arc Warlock build. You know, that other element that exists besides solar in, in the subclass tree? No, no, you don't? Unfortunately, you must be a, a well div user. Anyway, so, in this build video, I'm going to show off the Vesper of Radius Exotic with my Arc Warlock build and how it stacks up in the Endgame of Destiny. Or in this case, since it's very fresh and new, Onslaught. As you all know, Onslaught just has a high difficulty ceiling on Legend, and then as you progress through the waves, it gets harder and harder and harder. And, uh, well, let's see if another subclass besides Well can actually do something in Onslaught. And by the way, just to squash any delusions that some people may have, I'm not going to say that this build is better than Well and it should be ran over Well, because let's be honest, Well is just the definition of power creep. And for most people, Well is probably the go-to answer to doing especially Legend Onslaught. I will say, however, though, if you're confident in uh, your PvE abilities and you don't want to just play Well 24-7 or, you know, you're playing with two other Warlocks or another Warlock and one of you wants to be Well and you want to be something else, then this build is right up your alley. So with that being said, let's get started. So while the background footage plays and you guys can see how the build plays out, let's just quickly talk about what the purpose of the build is. So it's very polar opposite of what Solar Warlocks would do. In Well Warlocks situations, they would just pop the Well and then shoot targets from afar with whatever they can see. This build plays the aggressor and it goes after the enemies rather than staying back and being stationary. The entire identity of the build is to crowd control and just jolt and destroy targets as much as humanly possible. So the key points of this build is going to be A, spamming your abilities, your nades, your melees, your arc souls, your super, and then B, crowd control through jolt and blinding. Now thanks to Vesper and our ability spam, every single time that I rift near enemies, all of them get blinded instantly, doesn't matter. Outside of a boss level enemy, everything will instantly get blinded and then you'll be safe. Now on top of being safe and everything already being blind, even if there's something that doesn't get blind, thanks to our build, we will also have additional damage resistance when we're surrounded by enemies and we're in our healing rift, so we take less damage than you normally would. Then on top of that, we have our jolt functions, you know, our grenades, anything in your kit that you want to run, like Volt Shot, things of that nature. And then when we jolt targets, obviously, they take a chunk of damage. And also, we will be getting Ionic Traces back every time we do that. And when we get Ionic Traces, we would then be replenishing our abilities, and they'll come back faster and faster each time between nades, rifts, supers, rinse, repeat. And this build is very much catered around the fact that you get your abilities back extremely fast to the point of where you're going to be popping five, six Chaos Reach supers in a span of a couple of minutes. And yeah, I know Chaos Reach as its own thing is like a meme in terms of damage, but when you get a ton of them over a tiny amount of time and you're doing basically a horde mode or a defense mode where there's a ton of enemies coming at you non-stop around the clock and there's a bunch of add density, Chaos Reach actually becomes somewhat useful in these situations. So with that said, let's go over the select screen real quick for the subclass and then we get back to the background footage. Like I mentioned, you have Chaos Reach on as your super, then in abilities, Healing Rift, pretty standard, pop your healing, blind everything, and then you'll have a little overshield on you as well while you have Arc Soul Buddies with you. Jump, whatever you want, I have Burst Glide, and then for Grenade, I personally have Pulse Grenade, but you can use anything that you'd like really. It, the only thing that matters is that you actually land your grenades on your enemies. In terms of aspects, we have Electrostatic Mind, which is defeating targets with arc abilities, or defeating jolted slash blinded targets creates ionic traces. And this build is literally that in its entirety. Jolted targets, blinded targets, arc ability spam 24-7. And then collecting an ionic trace will make you amplified. This actually matters for one of the fragments below. We'll get to that. Then we have Arc Soul here, as I mentioned earlier. Cast your rift and make an arc soul, and then you get a mini little turret that helps you do damage. For passive damage, it's pretty good, and also, if your teammates step in your rift, they get arc soul buddies too, and then while you're amplified, your arc souls are supercharged and gain increased fire rate. Then for fragments, from left to right, we have spark of shock, your arc grenades jolt targets, you will be throwing a metric F ton of grenades, so I highly recommend you use this one. Then in slot 2, we have spark of amplitude, defeating targets rapidly while you are amplified creates an aura of power. Technically speaking, you don't need this. This just helps you get your super 
that much quicker and also obviously helping your teammates get their supers as well you could slot this out for something else if you'd like in slot three we have spark of resistance while surrounded by combatants you are more resistant to incoming damage don't think i really need to explain why that is here so let's move on fourth slot we have spark of ions defeating a jolted target creates an ionic trace again we're gonna be doing that non-stop so your regen is just gonna be going through the roof back to the footage now for weapons they're actually really flexible for this build because your entire purpose is to just spam abilities and disrupt everything through that. So you can just tie your weapons to whatever activity you're doing and what the main purpose of that activity is. So in the case of Onslaught, it's like a defense horde mode. So you want to have ad clearing capabilities. And keep in mind that when you're doing Onslaught, once you get to the 10th wave, which is going to be the boss phase, you can simply rally the flag with different ammo or even a different entire subclass if you'd like for a boss phase. So let's say like... Me personally, I was going to do an LMG for ad waves, and then when we get to the boss, or a boss, I would switch to rockets just to melt the boss super quick instead of using an LMG for that. Since Onslaught happens to have all champion types throughout the run, I would recommend you guys take the kinetic slot and the energy slot and try to put two weapons in there that can do at least one of those jobs for the champions. In my case, for example, I have Riptide in the kinetic slot because it can technically do the job of all three champion stunts, for barriers, it's a little uh, complicated because they can unfreeze and then put up their barrier shield. But for the other two, it can stun overloads and unstops very easily. Then in my other slot, I have Sunshot because Sunshot is just cracked this season. But it also can stun uh, unstoppable champions, which is also good. So it's just a nice workaround for that. So technically, you could use whatever weapons you want in the first two slots if you have some favorites. But I would recommend you keep in mind that you have some champion stunning capabilities in said weapons. Also, as a side note, remember that you can jolt and blind, which means you can stun unstops and overloads just through your abilities and the kit for Vespers. Here's the artifact screen, by the way, in case anybody was curious. You don't have to copy this one for one, but there are some helpful things that you could use in this uh, grid. So, for example, wished into being, while your super is nearly fully charged, ability final blows spawn orbs of power. So, if you're close to your super and you just throw a grenade to kill a couple of enemies, you will just, like, scoop up three orbs on the ground just like that for just throwing your grenade that's pretty helpful in this scenario also if you happen to be using solar weapons you should kit into razor precision torch flint striker and killing trigger because you can easily get radiant through your solar weapons and if you get radiant then your solar final blows can cause targets to ignite which do massive damage and gives you chunks of super energy finally the mod section so starting at the top at the helmet we have two copies of Dynamo. It reduces your super cooldown when using your class ability and your targets. You're doing that literally the entire time, so it's great for your super. Technically speaking, you can swap out a copy for like Heavy Ammo Finder or a Siphon if you'd like, but I roll with two copies of Dynamo. Next are the gloves. In the first slot, we have Firepower. You're going to find a blows, create an orb of power. You're going to do that nonstop. Second slot, we have Bolstering Detonation. Grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade. Like I said, nonstop. And then finally, it's just fastball. I it's, I only had one point here left in my gloves, th so I throw in fastball. You don't have to use this, though. Moving on to chest, it is always going to be about resistance. You're going to have void, arc, and solar resist, or whatever mix that you'd like to whatever activity you're doing. Just put on resist so you have less chances of dying. Now, in boots, some people might have thought, okay, he's probably going to put surges in here. And the answer to that is no. In this slot, I have... A copy of inversion a copy of recuperation and then a copy of absolution so for people that don't know what these mods do because you just put surges on your boots like a normal person inversion is reduces your grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb recuperation is replenishes health each time you pick up an orb and then absolution reduces all ability cooldowns each time you pick up an orb so as i mentioned previously you just want non-stop regen, and this helps you do that. Lastly, the class item, we have one copy of Bomber to reduce my grenade cooldown when using my class ability, and then one copy of Powerful Attraction, which is something you probably don't see on a Warlock very often. But in this situation, basically, since I'm going to be popping my Rift and my grenades back-to-back -back so often, Powerful Attraction lets me create orbs, and then I can move to a different location, pop my next Rift, and when I do... I blind the enemies, and I also scoop up the orbs that I just made at a different location right to me instantly, so I don't have to worry about running around for orbs too much. And in the last slot, we have one copy of Distribution. Reduce all ability cooldowns when using your class ability near targets. Again, non-stop. And that is it. That's the build. Just think of yourself as a giant wall of electricity 
that shocks enemies anytime they get near you, and then also you blind them. You poke their eyes out, sure, whatever, you know, roll with it. So, that's the build. It works really well in all content that has high add density, so you can run this in GMs, Lost Sectors when you're solo, etc. Basically anywhere where there's a bunch of trash mobs, and you can take advantage of it. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of the build below in the comments. And speaking of the comments, if you do want to support the channel, please consider subscribing today and leaving a like and or comment. It does help the channel grow, and it is much appreciated. If you don't know what to leave as a comment, you could leave Vesper or Vesper of Radius as the comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.